everyone, I'm Jess with Black Travelers Network, where we provide trips that focus on the Black experience in different parts of the world, and we share new stories that impact the African diaspora. I have to tell you, if you've ever thought about traveling to Brazil, especially if you've thought about traveling with us, we are hosting an online travel event where we will take you to Brazil right from the comfort of your own home. This event happens Saturday, August 22nd. You must register by Friday, August 21st in order to join us online. Take advantage of the online travel event that we have coming up. This is the most inexpensive way for you to travel. We've taken a part of our experience that we host on the ground in Rio and we've put it online at a massively deep discount. Registration deadline again is Friday, August 21st. You can look in the video description to get the link to show you how you can learn more about the online trip. This is a private group online travel experience. All I can tell you is those who attend, you will get more than what you pay for. Very exciting experience. So happy to offer this to our travel community, especially at this particular point in time when travel is restricted. So today's story is a little bit of a lengthy report. We're not going to go through all 54 countries, but we are going to go through the reopening process as much as we know right now at this moment. This moment is the latest and the greatest of what we've learned about the reopening of the African continent as of July 31st. Please take into consideration that these things are always changing, but this will at least give you an understanding of where things are right now. For those of you who do not want to sit through the entire video, so what we've done to simplify that is put in the comment section a timestamp for each of the countries. You can just click on the timestamp for the particular country you'd like to hear the most about. Let's get started. I'm going to go in alphabetical order. I'm also going to allow a brief pause between countries so there can be a distinct timestamp available. First up is Algeria. Algeria has begun to reopen internally and lift some of the restrictions that were present. International and domestic travel never ceased. Some businesses have been able to open and public transportation is now allowed to resume operations. A curfew is in effect from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. in 29 provinces across Algeria. Algeria has had 26,259 cases and 1,136 deaths as of July 31st, 2020. Next country, Angola. International flights have been canceled since March and the government of Angola has not released any plans to resume travel. Some districts are quarantined, including Kazengo and Luanda province. No travel is allowed in or out of these districts and face masks are required. Physical activity is permitted from 5.30 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. and 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. and group exercise is permitted with social distancing. Botswana. Botswana is one of Africa's most southern tourist locations. On June 12th, domestic travel, including flights, resumed with a health screening required before boarding. The borders remain closed to all tourists, but Botswana citizens will be allowed to return and will have to quarantine upon arrival. The country stopped approving foreign visas from countries that have been affected by coronavirus 
on March 16th. Benin. The last update on pandemic regulations came out of Benin in June when restrictions began to ease. At the time, bars, places of worship, and public transportation were allowed to reopen. Students even returned to school in May. Social distancing rules are in effect as citizens resume regular activity. Groups over 50 are not permitted and masks are required in public places. Flights, though limited, are available into and out of Benin at this time. Passengers will have to be tested upon arrival at their own expense of $165 paid in cash. Upon arrival, travelers will have to quarantine while waiting for their results. Burkina Faso. Airports are still closed for international travel, but there are some repatriation flights back to the United States. There is limited information about the conditions of coronavirus in Burkina Faso. Burundi. After months of criticism for not taking the pandemic seriously, Burundi has begun to mass test its citizens for coronavirus. The government has transitioned administrations over the course of the pandemic, as the former president died of a reported heart attack. The new president, Evarista Ndeye Samie, has called coronavirus, quote, the worst enemy of Burundi and launched new safety measures in recent days. Taxi drivers are asked to sanitize their vehicles and masks are required to be worn in hospitals. The government also lowered the cost of water and soap. There have been mixed reports about how many cases have been confirmed in Burundi. All reports are under 400 cases but many officials and local doctors believe it is much higher. Cameroon. According to the CDC, Cameroon has some of the highest coronavirus cases in all of Africa. The borders still remain closed, but a few international flights are available from Air France, Brussels Air, and Ethiopian Airways. The country says they have the virus under control due to an increase in the number of recoveries. Schools reopened in June, even though cases were still on the rise. The reported number of cases stands close to 17,000 with 385 deaths. Cape Verde. The borders of Cape Verde still remain closed to international travel. However, the government announced that it can resume August 1st for limited essential travel. At this time, a negative PCR test taken within 72 hours of departure is needed to travel between Sao and Santiago and to enter Cape Verde in general. Inter-island flights were able to resume operations on July 15th after some delay. Maritime travel between islands and Sao and Santiago also resumed. Cape Verde has reported 2,373 cases and 23 deaths as of July 31st, 2020. the Democratic Republic of Congo. The state of emergency in the Democratic Republic of Congo was extended until July 30th. The country may still be under a curfew from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. every day. Travelers are currently not permitted as international travel has not resumed. According to the U.S. Embassy, domestic travel may soon become a possibility. Cote d'Ivoire, also known as 
Ivory Coast. Cote d'Ivoire was still listed as being under a state of emergency through the end of July. However, international travel resumed with limited services as of July 1st. Land and maritime borders were closed up until July 30th. Travelers who do wish to visit Cote d'Ivoire will have to follow a 14-day quarantine. This will be imposed upon landing as you will have to fill out a travel declaration form. The country was previously considering the idea of having all travelers quarantine in one location, but no announcement has been made moving forward on this idea. Restaurants were open back in March, bars, nightclubs, and entertainment venues were closed through the end of July in the greater Abidjan area. Restrictions were already lifted in the rest of the country back in May. Face masks and social distancing are required when traveling through any public area and there are capacity limitations for venues. Cote d'Ivoire has had 15,000 cases and 93 deaths. Djibouti. The East African country began to reopen its economy in early May. Foreign Minister Mohammed Ali Youssef said, quote, the stakes are high, but there is no other option. People need to make their living and go to work, end quote. Currently, the list of places open includes restaurants, retail stores, grocery stores, places of worship, and public transportation. In the coming days, hotels and entertainment venues are set to reopen as well. September will see the reopening of event venues such as stadiums and schools. There's also a possibility of international travel to restart. All borders will remain closed until September when the situation will be re-evaluated. Equatorial Guinea. In mid-June, Equatorial Guinea began to loosen the restrictions present in the country. The first things to open were hotels and food industry. The opening of bars and entertainment venues remained unannounced. Travelers to Equatorial Guinea will have to submit a negative PCR test taken within 48 hours before arrival. Those who do not have a test will be quarantined by the government and tested at their own expense. There was previously a discrepancy over the number of cases the country experienced. However, as of July, it has been reported to be over 3,000 cases and 51 deaths. Egypt. Egypt has actually proven to be one of the more fascinating countries in terms of how they've handled this whole entire coronavirus global pandemic. International tourism resumed in Egypt as of July 1st. The first day saw a few flights come in, bringing tourists from countries such as the Ukraine. The Great Pyramids of Giza also reopened on July 1st after being closed since March. The pyramids underwent a deep cleaning and all paths and touch points earlier in the summer. Hotels opened to domestic tourists in May under the strict condition that they could not operate at more than 25% capacity until the end of May. That increased to 50% capacity on June 1st. Reuters also reported that hotels must implement a new health measure. There must be a clinic with a resident doctor to regularly screen temperatures and disinfectant equipment must be installed among other precautionary measures. It's been estimated that Egypt has and will continue to lose 1 billion tourism dollars for each month that it is closed. 
According to the New York Times, Egyptian cafes are also reopened, but with only half capacity allowed. The pyramids of Giza are open, but temperature checks are required. There are also reports that the international visitors do not have to have a negative COVID-19 test, but you must fill out a health certification form and show proof of insurance. So once again, it's being reported that if you want to travel and visit Egypt, the reports are stating that international visitors do not have to have a COVID-19 negative test. Next up is Eritrea. There have been limited reports from Eritrea detailing the status of the country during the coronavirus pandemic. The local embassy reports the essential businesses are only open until 8 p.m. and all other businesses are closed. Public transportation has not resumed operation and there is limited allowance for citizens to be outside. There have been 251 cases reported. Next country, Eswatini. And for those of you who are wondering, where is Eswatini? Eswatini is also known as Swaziland, the country within a country. Swaziland is actually parked right directly inside the country of South Africa. And as of late June, the lockdown in Eswatini has been extended indefinitely. The only things happening are essential such as grocery stores. Land and air borders remain closed for the time being. Gabon. As of July 1st, many pandemic measures had been lifted in Gabon. Restaurants with outside dining and hotels have reopened. Even schools have resumed classes for certain age groups. Social distancing and masks are mandated at all times. Travelers are being permitted into Gabon by air. Flights are sparse, but they're still available. Land and sea borders are closed. However, domestic travel is allowed through these methods. A Black Travelers Network favorite, as well as a very important country that is on our list of travel in August of 2021. So August 1st through August 9th, we will be in Ghana. But at the moment, Ghana will reopen international borders September 1st. Citizens are being allowed back into the country, but will have to quarantine for 14 days when they arrived. Emirates Airlines recently planned a repatriation flight out of Ghana back to the United States. Others may become available and posted through the U.S. Embassy site. So Ghana is really one of those countries that as of right now, it is slow to open its borders. They're actually being very thorough inside of Ghana because their goal is to reopen but not have to close again. So I really feel like a lot of what's going on in Ghana is that they are getting their infrastructure ready and prepared and in place so that once they open the borders that they have those safety measures laid out so that folks who want to come visit can come visit and feel safe and free to move about of course with whatever social distancing measures they implement but they're just being very thorough and they don't want to give a date and step away from the date we have had people who are located in Ghana who are indicating that, you know, Ghana will reopen international borders September 1st. One of the seasons that is peak season in Ghana is actually December because everyone knows that in December, Ghana hosts a very large uh, festival 
Afrochella. There are actually a lot of people who travel to Ghana around that time, not just folks coming in for Afrochella festivities, but also a lot of Ghanaian citizens who live in other parts of the world. Many of them actually have time off and tend to travel to Ghana around December. Guinea. The state of emergency in Guinea has been extended through August 31st as cases continue to rise. There is currently a curfew enacted from 11 p.m. to 4 a.m. Bars, churches, mosques, schools, and entertainment venues have been closed. Some places of worship can reopen if the county has no reported cases for 30 days. Markets and grocery stores are open but close at 6 p.m. daily. Social gatherings are limited to 20 people and there are limitations to the number of people that can be in vehicles. Anyone who wishes to travel in or out of Guinea must provide a negative PCR test taken within seven days before departure or arrival. They must also have three masks to travel with. If flying into Guinea, travelers will be retested and quarantined until results are received. Those who test negative will have to report their temperature to the government for 14 days. Next country up is Kenya. And for those of you who are a part of the Black Travelers Network community, you know we are traveling to Kenya June 29th to July 8th. 2021. President Uhuru Kenyatta says the country has reached enough preparedness to lessen restrictions but precautions are still being taken. Under the reopening plan, international travel began on August 1st. Mosques are open for an hour with 100 visitors. Kenya is studying patterns of interaction and the spread they are definitely doing everything they can do to make sure the country is safe and that the coronavirus numbers do not rise. As of right now, they're going into their third week of allowing international uh, travelers to travel back into Kenya. And so, and we feel very confident that next year, this will likely be behind much of the world and our trip to Kenya is going to be an amazing experience full of a little bit of, of every kind of experience you can get while in Kenya. Liberia. The number of coronavirus cases was on the rise in late June, prompting the president to extend the state of emergency until the end of July. 15 counties were quarantined and a curfew of 6 p.m. was in effect. Flights resumed on June 28th under new guidelines. Passengers will have to bring a negative PCR test or do a rapid test at the airport. Those getting on flights out of Liberia will have to arrive to the airport four hours early only those with tickets will be allowed inside the airport. Madagascar. Madagascar is still under very strict guidelines due to the pandemic. On July 5th, the government tightened the restrictions to limit social gatherings even more. Restaurants and bars are closed in the country and the few public places that are open require temperature checks, social distancing, and hand washing. All sports, cultural, and religious services are canceled. Even transportation is being tightly monitored. Residents are only allowed out for essentials with personal cars until 2 p.m. Essential businesses are only allowed to operate until noon. Taxis can only operate if they are transporting people who have health-related business. To make sure all rules are followed, Madagascar is imposing consequences such as community service for people who do not wear masks or face coverings. 
Mauritius. This island's nation was under lockdown from March 20th to June 15th when the restrictions were fully lifted. The tourism department announced that the nation is now coronavirus free and they are beginning to form a plan around opening borders. A date is yet to be set. Morocco. Morocco partially reopened its borders on July 14th to allow citizens to return to the country and foreign citizens to leave. The country had one of the strictest lockdowns that left Moroccan citizens trapped outside of the country and foreign citizens trapped inside. Flights will take place through Royal Air Morocco and Air Arabia. Anyone returning to Morocco will have to provide a negative PCR test and a serological test taken within 48 hours before entering the country. Ferries will be available to bring citizens back to Morocco from some countries and they will have the option to take a test on board. Mosque reopen July 15th. However, there is no word of when churches or synagogues can resume operations. To help fight coronavirus, Morocco has rapidly expanded its fleet of drones for surveillance, public service announcements, and sanitation. Mozambique. Mozambique has had a smaller number of cases than other African countries, with 1,536 cases and 11 deaths, hardly any. Even still, the country extended its state of emergency until the end of July to contain the situation. There are no international flights in or out of the country, but all visas have been extended until September 30th. Public transportation is open in the country, but face masks are required. Entertainment venues, bars, gyms, and pools are all closed. Recreational and cultural activities are banned in public places. Beaches are closed nationwide unless they are being used for exercise. Places of worship are also closed and religious services canceled. Namibia. Namibia entered its fourth phase of a five-phase reopening plan on June 30th. Phase four aims to begin reopening the stalled tourism industry. Tourists from, quote, a carefully selected low-risk market, end quote, will be permitted in the country to help restart the industry, according to Reuters. Under the new restrictions, public gatherings can increase to 250 people, sporting events are allowed with occupancy limitations, and casinos will open for pre-registered guests. Prior stages allow domestic travel to resume and businesses to reopen under new health measures, including shopping malls, retail stores, restaurants, hairdressers and barbers. This phase is expected to last until September when the government will reassess and potentially enter the fifth phase. The final phase will allow for air travel to resume and the border to reopen. Niger. The state of emergency in Niger isn't ending anytime soon as the government extended it another three months, starting July 12th. Places have begun to reopen in the country, including restaurants, retail stores, markets, and places of worship, all with new sanitary guidelines. Schools have reopened as of June 1st. Masks or face coverings are required in all public areas. A previous curfew from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. has now been lifted. It was announced that international travel resumed on August 1st. Travelers have to bring a negative coronavirus test taken within 72 hours before arrival. They will also be administered a rapid test on arrival and urged to quarantine.
Nigeria. Nigeria is another one of the countries on our list for 2021. Very excited to be visiting Lagos. So again, all of these places are really important to us. And so if you are interested in joining any one of the trips that we have coming up, make sure you send us an email to let us know of your interest and we will make sure you know how you can join any one of our travel experiences. Nigeria. Nigeria reopened its airports on July 8th after months of closure. Abuja, Lagos, Kanao, Port Harcourt, Owiri, and Matagori airports have all reopened on July 11th. International travel into Abuja and Lagos will resume August 29th. The country is under curfew from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. daily. Gatherings are limited to 20 people and face masks are mandatory. Rwanda. Rwanda reopened to the world on June 17th. However, commercial flights began August 1st. Anyone wishing to visit will have to produce a negative RT-PCR test that was taken 72 hours before arriving. Once you land, you will have to remain quarantined in your hotel until a second PCR test taken in Rwanda is given back to you 24 hours after arrival. Rwanda is also offering visas on arrival for citizens of all countries. All national parks in the country are open, but visitors will have to test negative for coronavirus 19 to 48 hours before visiting. Sao Tome and Principe. Sao Tome and Principe released a three-phase plan to reopen the country that started in June. The country recently completed phase three, which ran from July 16th to July 30th. Restaurants and cafes are open at half capacity. Churches, meetings, and lectures also follow the same capacity guidelines. Markets open for limited hours from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday to Saturday. Hotels, short-term rentals, casinos, museums, theaters, and exhibits can reopen under new guidelines. Gyms and recreational activities are able to reopen. Bars and clubs remain closed for the time. Phase three is also for international travel to resume. Travelers will have to provide a negative PCR test 72 hours before arrival to enter the country. Senegal. Senegal resumed international flights on July 15th. Visitors will have to provide a negative PCR test taken up to seven days before arrival. Land and sea borders still remain closed. The only travelers not allowed into Senegal are those who come from countries that have banned Senegalese people from entering. Senegal has reported more than 9,400 cases of coronavirus and 182 deaths. Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone is one of the poorest countries in Africa. During the pandemic, conditions only worsened and doctors went on strike due to not having enough PPE or receiving promised bonus payments. The country is still under curfew from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. However, things have begun to reopen. Churches and mosques have resumed operations as of July 13th. Public transportation restarted with a limit on how many passengers can board. Land and sea borders are still closed, but commercial flights began again on July 22nd. 
there have been close to 1,600 cases reported and 63 deaths, although the number may be higher as doctors claim less people have been admitted to hospitals since they went on strike. Seychelles. The Seychelles is going to extremes to protect itself from coronavirus. The small island nation has banned cruise ships until 2022. As of June, foreigners were permitted to vacation in the Seychelles, but the government's tourism ministry is only looking for high-end visitors for now. It has reopened its airports as well. Only visitors traveling on private jets and chartered flights heading directly to remote islands resorts will be allowed in the Seychelles. Visitors will not be allowed to leave their island resort during their stay. Commercial flights began in July, but the government said it expects visitors' numbers to be limited for a while, even once they resumed. Tourists will be required to be tested for COVID-19 48 hours before they arrive and will have to present proof of their lodging arrangements before being granted entry. South Africa. South Africa, of course, is on our list of places to travel in January of 2021. South Africa began to ease restrictions on May 1st. After five weeks of one of the world's strictest lockdowns that included a nightly curfew, limited exercise hours, and a total ban on alcohol and tobacco sales. The ease restrictions will allow for more exercise time, three hours in the morning, and restaurants will be allowed to open, but only for delivery. Social distancing rules and masks in public will remain mandatory. Discussions to reopen the country to some foreign tourists are ongoing. The tourism industry is pushing to reopen the country by September, but that timeline seems aggressive considering it has the most cases. More than 270,000 people as of July 12th in all of South Africa have coronavirus. The peak of the outbreak is expected sometime in August. There are reports most international flights will not resume until 2021, but that timeline could be updated to a reopening in September. Sudan. International travel is once again possible as of July 13th, as restrictions loosened in Sudan. Domestic flights are still suspended. The local curfew in Khartoum is active from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. daily. During the day, general travel is permitted. Public transportation is even beginning to resume operations as of early July, but only in Khartoum. Travelers who arrive in Sudan will need a negative PCR test taken 72 hours before arrival. Some travelers may also be tested at the airport. Tanzania. Tanzania is now accepting tourists under pre-COVID rules with no quarantine conditions attached. The government is asking passengers to complete a health surveillance form upon arrival and all arriving travelers are subject to an intensive screening and were necessary COVID-19 rapid testing. Mask wearing and social distancing are also still in place for anyone planning to visit. Tanzania has received a lot of criticism on how it has handled the coronavirus pandemic. The government hasn't actively revealed data about infection rates or deaths. The president says that releasing the data was causing panic. At the start of the pandemic, President John Magafuli declined to close churches, saying that the virus cannot survive in the body of Christ. It will burn. He also claimed Tanzania is free of coronavirus as of June due to prayer and the work of frontline workers. 
He even celebrated citizens who were wearing masks as a sign that people were no longer afraid and the virus was gone. Schools in the country reopened at the end of June. Students wear masks during the day except for physical exercise or if they have underlying conditions. Sanitizing and social distancing will be implemented. Tanzania's reported coronavirus cases are comparatively low, but experts say the toll is probably much higher. Uganda. Uganda has eased some of its lockdown restrictions, allowing some businesses, including hardware shops, restaurants, and wholesale stores to reopen. President Yawiri Museveni pushed back the reopening of schools in June, though he did not state in prior briefings that the virus was tamed. Previously, the government imposed strict restrictions that included the closure of all but absolutely essential businesses, dust to dawn curfews, and bans on both private and public vehicles. Transportation resumed in 33 districts, while others who have large refugee populations and large hubs of transportation on the border remain restricted. The number of reported cases increased as public transportation in select districts opened in late June. The Ugandan president warned that the growing number was concerning as people who use public transportation could not trace their contacts. Zambia. Zambia has reopened its borders as of late June as a way to rebuild the heavily impacted tourism sector. When coronavirus first took the world by whole, Zambia went on a six-week lockdown. The country had begun to reopen restaurants, some entertainment venues, and schools. However, large public gatherings are still banned. Bars and nightclubs will also remain closed as the economy reopens. As travelers begin to re-enter the country, airports will have some preventative measures. There will be health screenings that will check a traveler's temperature and require them to complete a health questionnaire. According to the latest guidance from the U.S. Embassy in Zambia, the country is still requiring a 14-day quarantine for anyone entering. Zimbabwe. Citizens in Zimbabwe are still urged to stay home as the virus continues to advance. The lockdown that began in March is still largely in effect. All borders to the country are still closed to international travel. Zimbabwe nationals can return home, but will face a 21-day quarantine. President Emerson Mnangagwa recently announced that a curfew would be implemented and consequences would be put in place for those who ignored it. Zimbabwe has had over 2,100 cases and 28 deaths. As you can see, folks, there's a wide variety of different ways each of the African countries are not only handling the global pandemic and the lockdown, but how they're managing reopening the country. I want to say thank you guys for listening. This was a very lengthy video. I hope you found it helpful. And until next time.